Hi, I'm Mark Durbin. And I'm Rick Kepler. And we are back in Big Bear Lake with some more movies made in the mountains. Over the years, hundreds of movies were made in Big Bear. And when we view these movies, we have a unique opportunity to see some old familiar landmarks in some places that aren't there anymore. We are going back in time about 40 years to the mid 1970s. This was when Andy Griffith was in Big Bear Lake making a series of films that were shot almost exclusively in and around the valley. And we're gonna start with this scene from Andy's movie, Winter Kill. Andy is playing a local town sheriff of a place called Eagle Lake, but he's driving up to the multi-arch dam at the west end of Big Bear Lake. At the time this movie was made, the highway into Big Bear Village went across the top of this dam. And unfortunately, this bridge no longer exists. But I want to tell you about it. Five. The multi-arch dam was built back in 1912. The bridge was added across the top in 1924. Five. For over 75 years, this historic old bridge served as the main artery into Big Bear. But the bridge was narrow, and there was much concern that the constant traffic was weakening it. Then, in 2009, a large construction crane appeared just west of the Big Bear Dam. This was the start of construction on a new larger overpass across the canyon. A year later, in 2010, the new bridge was nearing completion. And by August 2011, the new bridge was finally open. It would have been nice if this historic old bridge had been preserved for public use as a historic attraction. And there was actually much discussion about it at the time. Unfortunately, the decision was made to have it demolished, and it was. By the time it was gone, only a few sections of concrete railing had been saved as artifacts. The bottom line is, this important piece of Big Bear history has now vanished into history forever. Now, let's head over to Fawnskin for another scene from Winter Kill. Here is Andy Griffith rolling across the Grout Bay Bridge into Fawnskin. He is arriving at his office at the Eagle Lake Sheriff's Station. This is actually the Fawnskin Fire Department Firehouse. And if you ever get a chance to watch the movie, look closely. The firehouse was used extensively on both the inside and outside in making of this film. On a historical note, we need to point out that this is actually the second firehouse on this property. The original Fonskin firehouse was built in 1949, the year the Fonskin Fire Department was established. Across the street from the Fonskin Firehouse, there was once a landmark gas station that was built in 1946. It served the Fonskin community for many years, and it still existed into the 1970s when this film was made. However, that old gas station has since vanished into history. Today, this new structure, located on the same property, it's used by the Fonskin Fire Department to house additional firefighting equipment. Next, we are heading over to the south side of Big Bear Lake, to the public parking lot at the intersection of Village Drive and Knickerbocker, located on the east side of Big Bear Village. And in the 1970s, Andy was at that parking lot making a movie called Deadly Game. Only at that time, the parking lot didn't exist. This house was here, and this old house was once a very important structure in our Big Bear history. It was built around 1916, and it was the home of a young girl by the name of Beatrice Petter. Many of the scenes in Deadly Game were shot on the front porch of Beatrice's old house, which still looked a lot like it did when Beatrice lived here. This is what the Petter property looked like in 1918. And 100 years later, in 2018, the same scene looked like this. Now we want to tell you why Beatrice Petter and this house are so important to us. Beatrice, also known as B, holds the distinction of being Big Bear's 
very first published historian. It happened in the early 1930s. She was a senior in high school and living in that house. As part of an assignment in her journalism class, she was doing research and interviewing locals about the history of Big Bear Lake. Eventually, some of her classmates also became interested and got involved. As they got deeper into the research, the idea of a publication came up. To raise money to get it printed, the students obtained the support of local merchants by selling them ads in their book. In 1934, Beatrice finished editing all of their information together, and the Big Bear High School ended up publishing Big Bear Lake's very first historical book called The Big Bear Panorama. The book was an immediate success and it completely sold out the first year. It was reprinted again in 1935. Now we fast forward 50 years to 1987. This is when the Big Bear Panorama was printed again by the Big Bear Valley Historical Society. And it is still available at the museum today. Go check it out, this is a great book. Next, we're going to go to the north end of Knickerbocker, where it connects with Big Bear Boulevard. This is what the area looks like today. But back in the 1970s, it looked like this, when it was home for both Big Bear's fire department and the sheriff's station. This scene with Andy talking to his deputies looks west along Big Bear Boulevard. Today, the same scene looks like this. This is quite a change from the 1970s. Check out this scene from Andy's film, Girl in the Empty Grave. As Andy walks out of his office, he waves good morning to a firefighter working on his fire truck. That fireman is not an actor. He is actually local firefighter and my old B-shift captain, Bill O'Connell, who is now retired. Hiya, Bill. A little further east from where the old fire station was located is today's Big Bear Lake Middle School. Across the street from the middle school is today's Grizzly Manor. Back in the 1970s, the middle school was actually the Big Bear High School, and the Grizzly Manor was the campus donut shop. The interior of this donut shop was used for several scenes in Deadly Game. As we watch Andy Griffith and his co-star sitting at the table having a conversation, notice the Big Bear High School across the street. It can be clearly seen through the window in the background. And the high school itself was also used in the film as Andy and his co-star have a conversation at the main entrance. Next, we go to the intersection of Division and Big Bear Boulevard in Big Bear City. Check out this short scene as Andy drives through the intersection. Notice anything different? Everybody who grew up in Big Bear remembers the twin bears that once stood on these rock monuments. They've stood guard over this intersection ever since the Big Bear City subdivision was first developed in the 1920s. In the 1970s, those monuments still existed when this chase scene was filmed. Today, they are long gone, but actually the twin bears that stood on those monuments were fortunately preserved. They were on display in the Twin Bear Equipment Rental Yard at that intersection. Now let's take a look at another historic old location that was used extensively in Andy's movie, Winter Kill. It is today's popular Captain's Anchorage, located off of Big Bear Boulevard at the Moon Ridge Triangle. This building, with its native rock stone entrance, has changed very little since it first opened in the 1940s. Check out these scenes filmed inside the Captain's Anchorage. Now, next time you visit the restaurant, you will notice that the traditional look and feel of the early years has been effectively preserved. Keep in mind that this was in the 1970s because what is historically interesting to us 
is that as we go further back in time, we learn that this restaurant was owned by another popular film and TV star, Andy Devine. When this restaurant first opened in the 1940s, it was promoted and known as Andy Devine's Sportsman's Tavern. Construction of the Andy Devine's Sportsman's Tavern had actually begun before Andy was involved. When financial problems halted construction, Andy, along with Hank Halstead and Dick Probert, bought into the company and completed construction. The restaurant opened in May of 1947. Over the years, Andy's celebrity status was used to promote the Sportsman's Tavern. However, it didn't help Andy's celebrity status much when the local Big Bear Constable Coy Brown and state liquor control officers raided the tavern and arrested the bartender for selling liquor without a license, as reported in his 1949 newspaper article. For those of you who aren't familiar, Andy Devine was a highly recognizable and popular film star from the late 1920s through the 1960s. He appeared in over 400 films throughout his long movie career, including 10 feature films with Roy Rogers. In addition to his movies, Andy also co-starred with Guy Madison in the TV series The Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok. It ran for eight seasons from 1951 through 1958, and some of these episodes were also filmed in Big Bear Lake. These photos are from the family album of Herb Turton, they were taken in the 1950s and show Herb, when he was about 11 years old, posing with Guy Madison and Andy Devine between takes on the Wild Bill Hickok set in Big Bear Lake. Herb was born and raised in Big Bear and is now retired in San Diego. At the time these photos were taken, Andy's Sportsman's Tavern was an established business and he was actively involved in the Big Bear community. This article in the San Bernardino Sun in 1955 reported that Snow Summit would hold a slalom race for skiers, with Andy Devine presenting the trophies. Here is Andy actually on skis at Snow Summit. Esther Williams is on the left, next to Andy Devine, and his wife, Dorothy, is on the right. They are receiving personal skiing instructions from Tommy Tyndall, who is the man most responsible for getting the Snow Summit Ski Resort built. There is another more interesting side to Andy Devine. Most people don't know, but Andy was also a pilot, and he was part owner of an aviation company located in San Fernando Valley. In 1949, Andy and his business partner Dick Provert purchased an interest in the Big Bear City Airport, which is located on what was once pasture land between Division and Greenway in Big Bear City. Now check out this aerial view of the Big Bear Airport from 1932. It shows Greenway on the far right and Division on the far left. The area has been cleared of sagebrush and a small aircraft hangar is visible. By 1940, the airport's narrow dirt runway looked like this, as seen from the cockpit of an airplane that is about to pass over Division for a landing. In the 1940s, this was the airport's terminal building. It served the airport all the way up until the 1970s. Inside the terminal building, we see Andy with his partners Hank Halstead on the left and Dick Probert on the right. They're going over plans to expand the airport. Many improvements were made under the management of Andy and his partners. But most importantly, they had the runway paved, which opened the door for larger commercial aircraft to fly safely in and out of Big Bear. This is a view of a classic DC-3 airliner flying into Big Bear with a load of passengers. In the background is a Big Bear airport with its paved runway. So the bottom line for us is this. In addition to being an actor, Andy Devine made a serious contribution to the development of Big Bear Lake. As we mentioned earlier, during Andy Devine's film career, he made about 10 movies with legendary singing cowboy movie star Roy Rogers. And Roy was another celebrity who became a Big Bear business owner. And fortunately for us, 
He also made many of his films right here in Big Bear. And you can see Roy's story and all of our Mountain in the Movie stories by visiting our website, BigBearHistorySite.com or subscribing to our fascinating Big Bear channel at YouTube. See you then.